has a question? Yeah, is that Wes? Oh my God. First of all, thank you so much for being honest. Thank you, seriously. Because it takes a lot of courage to stand up and say, yo, what are you guys all talking about? And, you know, I'm always that person that's like, um, the indie wets, you know? Uh, and then also to be able to acknowledge and recognize the seat that you sit in and one of the results of that. So to start with what are the MDGs? The MDGs are the Millennium Development Goals that are set in place by the United Nations to be accomplished by the year 2015. You can find them on my website, guineamo.com. You can also go to the UN website, unyouthyear.com, and research them. Or you can just put in MDGs and tons of information will come up. I won't go through the specifics because the information is out there, but they are things like to eradicate poverty. Uh, to have gender equality, to have um, health care, maternal health care, primary education. They're huge goals, okay? Like really lofty ones. Now, the thing about these Millennium Development Goals is although they are massive, they are um, actually accomplishable if we garner our resources and turn our attention to them. So, for instance, you know, if you look at something like Facebook, which has literally changed the face of the world in the last couple of years, if Facebook was established with the intention and the understanding that we were also trying to bring clean drinking water to the world, and we were also trying to do these other things, and that sort of genius could be put towards one of these goals, I believe that it's actually very possible. As far as having privilege and apathy, I think that you're indifferent or you're not, no matter what, if you have or you don't. I don't think that it's a symptom or a result of being of privilege. I think um, volunteering, this is also the year of volunteerism. Volunteering is an excellent way of stepping outside of everything that you know and seeing what someone else is going through, seeing um, how you can really make a contribution. And, in terms of finding your passion when you know everything is given to you, I think it's your passion lies in the thing that you would do if nobody was looking, if you weren't going to get paid for for it, and that oh, how do I say it? The like if if you had. I don't even know how to describe it because I tend to, to look at passions in relation to those who don't have. So. Just kind of doing what you love doing. Yeah, whatever you love to do, really. Um, but I think just becoming awake, I mean, even in your question, there is a, there's an awakening and there's an interest. And the interest is where you'll actually be led to whatever your real passion is. But volunteer. If you don't volunteer, volunteer. It was a requirement at my school to volunteer 20 hours of community service every year in order to graduate. Best thing my school could have done. Because 20 hours really isn't that much. That was a great question. Are there any others? Is that Jason? Yep. Well, uh, this is much more personal than what those we had. So, uh, what was your reaction when you chose as the first ever UN Youth Champion? And how are you learning about the UN? Okay. Um, at first, I like did the happy dance, which is where you're like. <laughs> That's the happy dance. And then I did the oh my god, oh my god, what am I gonna do? I can't believe you know. The, oh And then I called, then I said, oh my god, I, I didn't tell my mom, I gotta tell my mom, you know? It, so it, it went through like all these different hilarious stages. I don't know if you've seen the movie Tangled. Um, I feel like her when she's like, when she busts out and she's like, oh my god, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Oh, okay, I can't do it, I can't do it, you know? Like, this is great, I'm gonna die. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's me. So that was my reaction, um, yeah in a very genuine way, and 
And what was the second question after what was my reaction to it? Oh, how'd they tell me? Well, it's, it was an email. Talking about social media, they posted it on my Facebook. No, um, it was an email, and initially it was to be a special envoy, um, which would have been a very different role than the one that I've taken, that, that this has become. Uh, so that's how it started, and somebody forwarded it to me, and it was something that I saw like two days later, read it, and was like, the United Nations would like for you to be this, which I'm like, what? <laughs> the United Nations, what? You know, and, and then I'm calling and I'm going, is this for real? Like, do you really mean this? Like, does this actually come from the office of the United Nations? Why are you even telling me? You know, and that's how it happened. <laughs> Gives everyone a pretty accurate picture of all oh, the Oh, totally. Yeah. And then the pacing started, and the screaming, and the jumping, and then the crying. How long did that last for? A while. Yeah. And, and then until until the press conference, you know, to actually announce it, the whole time I was like sweating bullets. Like, I mean, they're really serious, right? You know, I mean, they're not gonna. They, they really need it, you know. Right. Yeah. And then once it was announced, that's when I knew that okay, this is real. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of the seniors can, can associate with getting second into college much of it. It's much more oh, like that. Yeah. The happy dance. Yeah. Yeah. Was that your happy dance? Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, Marty. Um, after this year, do you feel like you're working with the UN? And you did so much I have no idea. This is the first time in my entire life that I that my goals are not about myself, my goals are truly about something outside of me. So, I don't know where I'm gonna live, I don't know what I'm gonna do, all I know is that while I'm on this tour, it's my objective every day to be present and to be impactful in the situations that I'm in, and then after it's over, you know, truly my, the one objective that I have is, is anybody who's, between grades 9 through 12, 25 years old. See my 25? <laughs> Silly. Nobody's 25, right? I mean, I figure. We have not had an international year of youth for 25 years. So, whether I'm the face or carrying the flag or whatever in the future, I don't, I want the United Nations to understand that we can never go 25 years without having an international year of youth. And it doesn't matter if I am attached to it, it just, it has to happen because young people have to know that the whole world is behind them and supporting them. I mean, yeah. Um, anyone else? Uh, particular region or country uh, raise awareness about the MDGs if one of them, or some of them in particular, uh, have conflicts with that country's values or beliefs, specifically like gender equality, for instance. Uh, uh, wow. I, the, the answer is the same answer that I give you really talk to your parents, like, choose your battles. Um, but what I would say is, the, United, the, the purpose and the goal of the United Nations is to protect the rights of every individual, regardless of gender, socioeconomic status, anything, religious belief. And so these are essentially universal, um, universal laws that are in place for everyone. So if something makes you feel uncomfortable personally, you don't have to be the voice for that particular issue because there's someone like me who's going to be willing to be the voice for all of the issues. But find something that you are passionate about and don't waste, uh, 
just because you can't necessarily speak up in that particular area, you can speak up in another area. And one thing that I notice about young people is that we can be so passionate about everything that we forget to just listen, you know? Listen to the concerns of particularly even that nation. Try to understand what, what's underlying that, because I don't think that people intentionally set out to make life miserable for someone else. I think often it's just a lack of understanding. So in order to have someone understand you, you have to understand them. So looking at those nations and eliminating any judgment about them and saying, okay, let me try to understand where it is you're coming from. What is the root of why you don't believe this or that and then come up with your counter argument.